Hi you guys, welcome to Art and Alpacas. Today I'm going to be talking about a few little projects that would be great for spring, they would be great for Easter, and when I think of spring and Easter I'm always thinking about eggs and um, just the whole renewal and rebirth um, that springtime brings. So uh, when I was out with my little hens this morning, this is what they um, had in their nest. This is lots of fun, beautiful colors. My Easter acres lay these kind of green. I don't know if you can see uh, the pretty color that that is. Lots of different fun colors. It's like a little Easter egg hunt every day out there. We have 11 hens and so um, we get about seven or eight um, eggs a day. Not everyone is laying. Some of them are beyond their time to lay eggs. So we're just grateful for our chickens. Um, the one thing that we'll talk about first is this project that has to do with upcycling and reusing your um, foil lids or pans that you might get from takeout. I um, love Fabergé eggs. We'll talk about Fabergé eggs. This, and I'll show you kind of a close up view of it. Um, this is, my little Fabergé egg that I did. I had this frame. I'm not going out right now at all. And I, um, if I do go out, I do curbside pickup from Michael's. So I already had this. This is a birch. Um, this is for paintings, actually. It's like a really good um, birch piece. But I'll probably, once Easter's done, I'll take this out, flip it over, I'll do a painting on it, and just constantly trying to reuse the stuff I have. But um, Frame-wise, if you do want to frame this, if you do want to frame your project, um, this was a gold frame from the dollar store. So I just spray painted it. I love to spray paint. So that's another way you can do it if you want to frame it. You could do anything. You don't have to do an egg or a Fab Fabergé egg. Fabergé is just like this, you know, they're super fancy. They're really gorgeous. Google it. Um, they are beautiful. I. Um, wanted to print off um, a coloring book page. It, whatever you're doing, if you want to trace it or draw your own is fine too. But if you want to trace it, you could uh, just Google coloring book pages. Those seem to be the easiest thing to um, trace. Again, you could create your own thing. Um, but I just, this has been drawn on a couple of times, but this was just a coloring book page of a Fabergé egg. So that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I did for this also. Um, so I'm gonna scoot this out of the way, and I'll talk to you about this in just a minute. This is a fun little project. So you'll need some scrapbook paper too. I just had a bunch of paper out there, and Mine, I like the ones that are two-sided because then you can choose and um, I want to frame this and probably give it as a gift. So I like this side, but this side would be cute too. It's going to be a lot of turquoise. I just realized I have turquoise paint, so <laughs> it's going to be super crazy. You could do it in any color paint, black or whatever, but I, I love um, the color turquoise and so I just feel like I can't use enough of it. So I think I'll probably use this side of it, or maybe this one, I can't decide. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is talk really quick about the pans. So this is one that didn't work, but it would work for smaller areas, or, I mean, this is a cool design in and of itself that your child or you could add to, it's really heavy. This is the bottom of um, like a roasting pan. Um, and if you buy them at the dollar store, they are actually thinner. And the thinner, the better. You don't want them super, super heavy, okay? I just found out this was too heavy and I didn't like all this pattern on it. Um, the one I used for this, and you can see that it has a really cool circle shape around it and I loved that I got the best takeout at um, I live in salt in a suburb outside of Salt Lake City and um, there's a plate called place called Oakwood fire kitchen and a friend of mine owns it so I want to support him but they have the best takeout lids they have this perfect circle in the center and 
it is lovely. Also, I was just trying to find stuff I had around the house because I only have one of those. So we sometimes do kind of a Cafe Rio dinner. And so I bought these at the dollar store a long time ago. And they're really thin because they are from the dollar store, so they're a little thinner, and so they work perfect. Another thing that would work great for this project is the heavy sheets of tin foil. Um, those are perfect because, but they do wrinkle a little more. I like that these don't quite wrinkle as much. Plus, I like to upcycle. You're just going to have to clean it out really well. Cut the bottom out. Now, you can see that this has a pattern on it. Um, so I didn't want that pattern as much, so I ironed it with an iron. I didn't put steam on it, but it wouldn't really matter if steam was on it or not. And I ironed it, and then I just took my finger, and I just started um, pressing it out like this. So that worked really well to take that pattern off. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this, and even though some of the pattern is still on there, it's not going to matter at all. So I'm going to move the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to scoot it up just a bit. And I think I'll use this to put my paint in. So um, acrylic paint is what we need for this. I'm trying to get that a little more forward. And you'll need your coloring book page. You will need some tape. I think masking tape or painter's tape would probably work really well on this. I'm just, again, I'm just using stuff I have here at home. So the first thing, and again, you want it on a magazine because if you do it on a hard table, it won't impress, you want to press down in it because you want to make an impression into the foil, okay? So I use a pen because that seems to work. I press really hard and I don't want to break my pencil. So you'll see there's two different ways to do it. You can emboss it um, where it's raised or, um, or you're impressing it where you're pressing it in. I just want this to say, stay on there and stay still. So that's why I taped it down. So the next thing, and you could probably have an edge on this. I just cut it a little too close so that you could tape it down easier. So the next thing that you'll do is you will just trace it, but you kind of have to press sort of hard to do it. Now, I'm only going to do one half of it right now. I'll probably do the outline too, but I just don't want to take up a ton of time doing this when you'll figure it out. I made a little blip right there and I can tell that's going to be a problem. So sometimes you can go back through and re-press it down to make it look a little bit better. So you can already see that that's coming through. I made a little blip down there, so that's pretty easy to fix. You could rub it out like this with your hand, or you could um, just make the line a little heavier. So I'm pressing pretty hard. If I was using a pencil, um, I think it would push right through this. I've used pencils a lot on these things, but who knows? There are so many cool patterns of things out there that you can do. The reason I like the Fabergé pattern is because I like things really ornate looking. I also like that this, when you put the paint on it, it looks really a lot like a patina. And a patina is when metal is outside, especially copper, sort of turns that blue color I mean, it doesn't happen just with copper, it happens with, with other metals, but I particularly love that copper turns that gorgeous blue. I like the rustic look of this. I think when you put the paint on, it looks really neat and super rustic and cool. 
you can see I'm pressing pretty hard. It's, it's coming through, but it's not going to quite be impressed enough. Um, so I am going to go back over it. Just going to do this half. Okay. So you can lift it up and check it. Also, I think I forgot a line here. So the thing that I need to do now is I need to go back over it with my pen. I'll take this tape off. You want to go back over it with your pen to make those lines a little deeper. It's not going to, some people like to put the paint on this side. I like to put it on the embossed side where it's raised because I want my paint to go down into these areas. And I'll show you how that looks when you put paint into the impressed, where it's impressed down. But for now, I'm going to really darken these lines up. And so you will have to go over them one more time just to make sure that it is a solid line. If you make a mistake, just kind of like down here, where I kind of made that line weird, you could make it a little thicker down there. You know, you can thicken these lines up. With regular tin foil, I'm not gonna worry about that side, but with regular tin foil, uh, the only problem is, oops, I made a little mistake there too. The only problem with regular tin foil is that you could go all the way through it. So, I would say lids probably better. But in art class, when I taught, I've done plenty of tin foil. The reason I chose this pattern, I love the little circles on it because the little circles really would look good if you're trying to do a fancier Fabergé egg. Oops, that guy fell off. Used better glue than I did. Um, I actually just used white glue to glue these little diamonds or fake rhinestones on there. Um, so you could do sequins. That would look kind of neat. Um, you could really add so much on top of that that would make it look super cool and like a Fabergé egg. Um, it is hard though to go over it the second time because Sometimes your pen just wings outside of the line for no apparent reason. Probably, probably that's just me. Um, but because I'm not super particular about things, I um, I like to just kind of make things a little more rustic. That's my word to use when I do something that's not very <laughs> precise. It's rustic. Okay, so I think that is raised better and probably ready for us to put the paint on. <clears throat> I'm going to use this, just put my paint in because I've already done it. I usually wouldn't want to waste an entire pan on this. For paint. I don't really use a brush for this. I use, you should probably put maybe a quarter size in there, depending on the size of what you're doing. There are so many other things you could do. You could take Sharpie markers if you want it more of a stained glass look. You can take Sharpie markers and color in all of these areas. It needs to probably be Sharpie because the cheaper markers don't work as great. Um, you could leave it plain. You don't have to put paint on it and make kind of a patinaed look at all. That's just what I like. So just kind of use your imagination on that. But I use just a paper towel um, and I just blot it on. So I just want to get it down into every space and it, it probably shouldn't be on there really thick because it needs to dry pretty quickly. You want it to dry pretty, if you're like me, because I like to like hurry and get to the next part of the project really fast. I'm gonna block that for a second here. 
Um, just to show you what it will look like if you do it on the opposite side. I'm going to get paint all over my hands now, which is great because I like to be painty. Um, we'll just kind of... Now you're putting it right down into the grooves. So you have to press a little bit to get that in there. Um, while we're letting these dry, I'm going to show you, and my hands are going to stay painty, so sorry about that, they just are. I'm going to show you something kind of fun, which is this little egg holder, and do you recognize what this is? You should, if you're doing takeout for pizza, because it's the little pizza table that I call the Barbie table or the little doll miniature table. I mean, obviously you can repurpose this into so many things. One is, yeah, a table for a miniature land. Um, but I thought I would flip it over and have it be a little holder for my own little personalized Fabergé egg. Um, I got these, I think a while ago, just at, I don't know, you can get them at the dollar store, Michaels, they're just a regular, egg but it's metallic so I wanted it a little fancier and then I just got these this is just a scrapbooking sticker that I stuck on this is like a two second project it goes so fast um, and then regular paint doesn't work great on this because you're painting on plastic so I just use spray paint and that took about three seconds but if you see that the the bottom is really curvy so it doesn't lay super flat so I put three little blobs of hot glue there because I wanted it to be just a little more stable on the table <laughs> look at my hands they're painty um, so that's how I did it and if you did a bunch of these it, this would just be gorgeous you could um, sequin these um, you could do so much to make them look like a really fancy embellished Egg, which is my favorite thing ever is embellished really fancy eggs um, so we got that done that one's an easy one now let's see if this is kind of ready to start removing the it dries pretty fast what we don't want to have happen is so we, what we want to do is remove the paint from the raised lines and buff that out we don't, we want it to stay in all the recessed areas. If you're doing the other side, you know, you're just gonna do the opposite. I like the raised side because I love to see um, something when it's uh, buffed out that way. So first you can just start blotting it. It's already feeling tacky and sticky to me, which means it's drying. You don't want it completely dry because then it's a little harder to buff out. But um, I think I'll get another tissue. So I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but we want those raised lines to show up. And I'm just swiping at it. This isn't wet, this is just dry. I want all the paint to stay in there. And I want the, that's why this top piece, um, this raised piece has to be raised so high. So if you want it more rustic and if you want it more of a patina, just keep rubbing. If you want this off, just get some water and it'll come right off. Or just, you can just keep rubbing it and it's going to come off. And the more you rub it, the more cool it's going to start to look. It's just got this gorgeous, um really neat look to it that I love. So now you've buffed that out. I love that. I think that looks super cool. On the other side, I, I mean, it's fun to do just for an idea of the difference that it is, that it makes. I'm not, that's not something I would do, but if you're doing this with kids, this is just such a great way of seeing the difference between an impression and something that's embossed 
and you know you can call it a relief you can call it whatever you want i call it embossed because it is raised up so yeah big difference completely different look in my opinion but so then all you do like on this one so because it had that nice circle around it i wanted to keep that circle but if you are whatever you're doing you can just cut right around it um, and then you'll just glue it straight down onto your construct or to your scrapbook paper. If you don't have scrapbook paper, you could use construction paper, cardstock. You could use a photo background. Just really think of all the things that you have at home that you can repurpose or upcycle. So of course I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm just showing you just a part of it, but. Um, that's too pointy on top. So you'll just take your glue gun and you'll just right around the edge like that and get that onto your paper. You'll glue that down and just pretend this whole thing is done. It's not. And you'll flip it into your picture frame. Um, if you're doing something maybe for a child's room that is like maybe you want to do a car or an animal or something that would look really neat like in a set of three pictures um, you can personalize it you could even just do a, a great big initial for their initial for their bedroom or something but um, you could use stickers on it to put their you know put their name on it you could just put a sticker on here there's just so many things you can do with this kind of um, craft, with this kind of um, impress or embossing on this particular metal. So there you go. I'm going to do a quick demo before we go out and see the animals. I'm going to do a quick demo on spinning. And I want to show you let's see here so this is because we'll go out and see the animals this is roving There's a huge bag of it once the animals are sheared so this is from franklin my hands are dry so this is <laughs> this isn't going to get on it but this is from franklin the angora goat after i send it to the mill it comes back in what's called roving and so roving is I'm going to set this up so you can kind of see it better. So roving is just these long, beautiful, fluffy, clean. Now you can still see it has what's called vegetable matter in it. So I just pick those out. If there's a piece of grass in there or a piece of hay, I try to pick it out. I am spinning up a whole bunch for my friend Becky. And so when you spin it, um, this is a bobbin and we're going to fill up. I need to fill up this whole bobbin. Then I need to fill up another bobbin with, these are called singles. And then after I'm done with that, then I will take these, I'll take two bobbins and I'll ply them together. So plying is just this, where you have two that wrap around each other the opposite way and it makes a piece of yarn. So this is a two, it would be a two ply yarn. Pretend that these are two separate pieces. Um, but for spinning, it's just so relaxing and easy, but it does take a bit to, sorry, this bag's driving me crazy right here. I'm trying not to break this piece, but it's so easy to add on even if you do. It feels like it's the fluffiest, most beautiful, soft, incredible stuff hold on i gotta move my spinning wheel that you'll ever 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 feel so when you see winston or franklin the goat out there you'll know this came from them winston i mean franklin is my more shy goatee and he is just a, has a beautiful and very um consistent fleece that means that the kind of the um, the hair, these guys create hair, not wool. The hair is laying 
uh, lays well on top of itself as well as it has uh, longer pieces. Sorry, I'm not being very technical right now. But if I feel a piece in there, I just, you know, a piece of vegetable matter, I take it out. You do have to move this down and back as you're going up and down because you don't want a big blob all in one place. So there you go. I'm spinning yarn with Franklin, the Angora goat. I like my yarn kind of thick. So you can see I'm not doing it super thin. Most people do their yarn I, really thin. I don't. And I have a larger, um, this is called an orifice. I have one there that is for bulky yarn. So I do, I do thicker, heavier yarn. Okay, that's it. That's how you, that's how you spin from these crazies out here. Now, let's go outside and we are going to take this off. And I think today I'm going to give these guys some apples because they have been really picky lately about what their snack is. But they always, always, always love apples. Now they may come and they may not come. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll just be goaties and sheep. We'll see if the alpacas come. Hopefully you can see this. Snacks! Boys! Come on, goaties! Come on, sheepies! Treat! Treat! Oh, the chickens. Oh, chickens are running. <laughs> I can't <laughs> turn this around. I have no idea why the icon is gone for flipping my camera around right now, but um, the little chickens are just running. Hey, sweeties! Sweet Patchy. Oh, chicken, chicken, chicken. These are my, the lighter colored ones are my Easter Eggers. This brown one is one of the Dixie Chicks. That's Natalie right there. Go on, Natalie. The black ones are called um, Black Copper Marins. See the, I don't know if you can see the copper on their neck. They are just, and I'm sorry if the camera's goofy, I am just flipping it. Goaties! Nobody's interested in treats except the chickens. Come on, goaties. Here he comes. We'll see what happens. They're very into grazing right now. The um, pasture or the field, it's not really a great pasture, it's a field. It, um, it's growing. The green grass is growing now, so they're super interested in getting out there and getting in the grass. Hello, sweetheart chickens. Hello, my hens. Looks like just the chickens are coming today. Everyone else is being a snob. Okay, well, thank you for coming to our little art and alpacas today. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.